Hello students, I hope you are all doing well. Welcome to the first lecture for the course AFS 101. This is a two credit hour course which you are required to study as part of your courses at Kofuridia Technical University. I am going to be your lecturer for the next 14 weeks. My name is Grace Opari. In this course, you'll be required to attend class, participate in presentations and quizzes, which is going to be scored as 20 marks. In addition to class work and presentations, in the middle of the semester, there is going to be a mid-semester examination, which is also going to carry 20 marks. Then the end of semester examination, which is going to give you 60 marks. So in total, you are going to have 100 marks for this course. Note that attending classes and participating in the discussion is an important aspect of the course. And that is also going to give you a mark. This is a video recording of the first lecture. Today, the topic or our focus for this lecture is to look at the scope of African studies. The question is, what is African studies? Is it even relevant to study African studies as a course? You have all come here to study various programs, biomedical engineering, food technology. Why are we bothering you with the subject of African studies? We will also look at some of the problems facing the discipline of African studies in Africa. So we will start with an introduction or a definition of what African studies is. The question then is, what is African studies? African studies can be said to be a formally organized multidisciplinary academic study of the continent of Africa and its people, as well as the African diaspora. What we mean by this is that African studies focuses on studying the continent of Africa, its history, its culture, its music, its demography, in terms of its ethnic groups. It focuses on the language of the people of Africa, their art, their music, their literature, their medicine and technology. All of these various disciplines come together to form the holistic discipline of African studies. It does not only focus on the people on Africa and the African continent. It also focuses on the African diaspora. When we say African diaspora, what we mean is the African people living outside the continent of Africa. This means that people who are living in Western countries and European countries, or but are of African descent. This implies that African studies is not only focused on issues bordering on the African continent and the African people living on the African continent, but also looks at issues or subjects that surround Africans living outside the continent of Africa. African studies is a multidisciplinary academic study. When we say it is multidisciplinary, what we mean is that it involves or combines different academic disciplines in studying its object. This means that in African studies, you can have the discipline of history, it involves the discipline of religion, it involves literature, it involves language, art, and form. What this means is that when you talk about African studies, you may have various scholars studying different aspects or different disciplines, but with a focus on Africa. So you may have a historian who is studying the history of Africa. And that is also part of African studies. You may have a religious scholar whose focus is just on the religions in Africa. So African traditional religion, Islam and Christianity. You may have a scholar who is interested in the medicine and the technology of Africa. All of these come together to form African studies. 
That is why we say that African studies is multidisciplinary. Besides it being multidisciplinary, it is also interdisciplinary. When we say African studies is interdisciplinary, what we mean is that it also involves a combination of two or more disciplines that integrates information or shared knowledge on a particular matter. So for instance, you may have a project or a research on a certain group of people, let's say the Evers. You have one scholar from the history aspect. So this scholar is focusing on the history. Another scholar will also be focusing on the religion. And then they will synthesize their knowledge or the information they have gathered on the field to find out how the history of the people is influenced or has influenced their religion, or how their history has contributed to the kind of religion that they are practicing. In this instance, we will say that African studies is interdisciplinary. So, African studies explores various facets of the African life. And this involves people living on the continent and those outside the continent. It studies issues that happened in pre-colonial times, issues that happened in the colonial times, and even the contemporary issues that are affecting the African people and the African continent at large. African studies is, does not focus on just one ethnic group. African studies focuses on the various ethnic groups across the continent of Africa. So you may find a Ghanaian scholar who will be studying the Maasai of Kenya. He is not a Kenyan, but he or she will be undertaking research in Kenya and will bring you considerable knowledge about the people of Kenya. You may find a Nigerian who is also doing a research elsewhere in other parts of Africa and even outside the continent of Africa. The African diaspora, as I have already mentioned, involves the people of African descent living outside the continent of Africa. How did this come about? One may ask. The reason for the African diaspora or the factors that has influenced Africans to move out of their continents is largely as a result of immigration. And this immigration may be either ancient voluntary migration. And this means that there is the belief that Africans are the first humans to populate the world. So studies have indicated that Africa being the first continent where humans resided, the people voluntarily moved to other parts of the world. So some of them moved outside the continent of Africa and settled in other areas of the world. We also have the situations where people were forced to move outside the continent of Africa and to settle in other parts of the world. We can talk about the transatlantic slave trade. We can talk about the sub-Saharan slave trade. We can even talk about colonialism, the French policy of assimilation. These were factors that coerced people to move outside the continent of Africa and to settle in other parts of the world. And there's also the manipulated migration. This is where people on their own move outside the continent of Africa in pursuit of economic gains or for academic achievements. So people are going to school, people are finding jobs, people are appointed by political parties or presidents of a country to become diplomats in other parts of the world. So by this, you have people of African descent living in other parts of the world. The next question that we are going to tackle is, what is the origin for African studies? Why was there the need for
for the introduction of African studies as a course? And how did African studies come into being? For over a century, or for several years, knowledge about Africa was gained through European exploration. What this means is that the knowledge that people had about Africa was as a result of what the earlier explorers had written down about Africa. This means that Africans themselves did not have the opportunity to tell their own story, their own history, from their own perspective. The early missionaries, the early colonial masters, and the early explorers were the ones telling the African story. And as we can all imagine, these stories were told with an Eurocentric lens. This means that these stories were told from the European perspective. However, following the independence of some African countries and the rise for nationalism and the need for Africa to be independent and to tell their own story and to produce their own knowledge, then there became the need for the introduction of African studies. This means that there was a call for the African people and the African continent to be studied in its original location by its own people and from their own perspective. This call was led by some nationalist and independent fighters like Dr. Kwame Nkrumah, the first president of Ghana. We have Leopold Sengo. He was the first president of Senegal, the great negative poet. There's also Inamdi Azikiwe, the first president of Nigeria. These scholars and nationalists, in addition with others, came together to challenge the European presumptions about Africa to call for an intellectual reconstruction of the African continent. So their argument was that there is a need for Africa to be studied by its own people. And this should be underpinned by the research methods that is found within the African continent. They also argued that African studies should be included in the academics or in the curricula of the African people. Because of this, there was the initiative for students to begin to learn African studies. And this began with the higher education institution. There was the need because the African people and at worst contemporary Africans, we know very little about our culture, our history, our religion, and our acts. In fact, we know little about our African background and our African heritage. So there was the need for an inclusion of African studies into the educational curricula, which has largely been Europeanized, to reconscientize the African, to know, to understand, and to appreciate his or her own African heritage and background. In Ghana, for instance, when there was the call for the introduction and the establishment of African studies, in the year 1961, Dr. Kwame Nkrumah established the Institute of African Studies at the University of Ghana. Currently, it is a big institution which is mainly focused on research on the people and the continent of Africa and the African diaspora. They offer master's and PhD programs in African studies. When you go to the University of Cape Coast too, there is a Center for African and international studies, where they offer Bachelor of Arts degrees in African studies. This is replicated in other African countries, where you find institutes and departments in almost across universities in Africa. And the study of African studies is not just limited to Africa. When you go to Europe, when you go to 
America, when you go to the Middle East, you find several schools or several universities with full departments and institutes dedicated to the study of Africa. So what is the purpose of African studies? Or why is it necessary for you as a student to study African studies? The first is that there is the need for us to study African studies in order for us to be exposed to our African background, to acquire adequate knowledge on our heritage, our religion, our history, our practices. In fact, most of us here may not even know the history of the ethnic groups or the families we belong to. Most of us may not even know the descent line that we trace. Most of us take by hook and line what we have heard and read about Africa. And most of the times, these are not the true representation of events or the situations as they pertain to the African people. There have been a lot of misconceptions about us to the extent that some of us don't even want to be associated with our African heritage. We are Africans living on the African continent or even outside Africa, yet still we behave like we are Europeans or we are Americans or we are from a different or we, we claim different historical and heritage backgrounds. So there is the need for you to study African studies so that you come to understand and appreciate where you come from and to have adequate knowledge about it. Secondly, there have been a lot of misconceptions about Africa, as I have already mentioned. This course, as we move forward, we are going to discuss some of the misconceptions. So this course is going to help you to appreciate and to dispel some of the misconceptions you have heard about Africa. So once you get exposed to the real history, the real cultural practices of the African people, as you get to understand the reasons or the motive why certain things were done. And this will go a long way to dispel some of the misconceptions that you already have about Africa. In fact, it's going to give you a beautiful view about yourself and you will come to appreciate who you are. It will also help you, thirdly, it will help you to know and to appreciate the efforts and the contributions that some African leaders have contributed to the development of Africa, as well as non-Africans. You know, we cannot tell the African history and the African story without the role that some Europeans or, in general, some non-Africans have played in it. And in this course, you are going to see how Africans themselves and some non-Africans have contributed to the economic, the politics, and the educational development of Africa. The fourth reason is that it is going to give you a broad perspective on the problems facing the continent of Africa, the challenges facing us, to help you in your research. In fact, as you progress into your course, you are going to take research topics, you are going to work on projects. And in your projects, you are expected to tackle a problem and to find a solution to it. So the study of this course is going to expose you to some of these problems in Africa. And it is going to be your duty as a student of Africa, or as an African student, to find an African solution to these problems. The next is that it is also going to help you to identify the indigenous potentials and values that can be exploited to enrich the African life and solve the African problem. Sometimes we are under the impression that nothing good can be found in Africa or nothing good 
is here in Africa, or Africa has no potential, or everything about Africa is bad. As we delve deeper into the course in the subsequent weeks, you will come to know that Africa has potentials. In fact, there are various indigenous values and technologies right here on the continent and in our country, which you as, an, as a student or as an African student can employ in your various fields of study in solving problems for the African people. Finally, you will also come to know about other African societies. Some of you may be just an Akan. All you know about is how something is done as an Akan. You don't even know about the other people. You don't know much about the Adangbes. You don't know much about the Maasai, the Nwe of Sudan. You don't know much about the Igbos or the Yorubes of Nigeria. As we progress into this course, you are going to know the different practices in these societies and you come to appreciate how to peacefully coexist in such a heterogeneous society. African studies as a course has faced its own challenges. In fact, it had undergone some challenges which had affected its development. Some strides have been made. We are making progress. But still, some of these challenges persist. So the next topic we are going to look at is, what are some of these problems? What are some of these challenges that is facing the study of African studies as an academic discipline? To begin with, there is lack of adequate documentation on Africa. It is important to know that culturally, Africa is an oral society, an oral society in the sense that our literacy was not based on writing or documentation, but on oral transmission from one generation to the other. So we tell our history orally, we tell our culture orally, we tell our, our stories orally. And in fact, that is one of the reasons why the Europeans argued that Africa has no history. Because to them, history is what is written and not what is told. And the problem with the orality of the African society is that as something is being told from one person to the other, there are possibilities of distortions. So the facts may be distorted. The accounts that is given from one person to the other may not be as accurate as it was originally. Because of this, when people who are now interested in the study of African studies undertake research studies, they are unable to get the actual facts that will help them to produce accurate and reliable information and knowledge to advance the course of African studies. And this has become a problem because you may have different accounts explaining just one event. You may go to a field, let's say you ask about the history of the people. And you may be given five accounts, five different accounts. Some will say that uh, our forefathers migrated from um, a town named Agogo on their way they met this chief who also offered them a land to stay or to settle on. Another person will also say that we migrated from Asochain. And then another person will also come and say that, oh, we did not even migrate from here. We migrated from here and there. So at the end of the day, you have different accounts of the same event. And this leads to a distortion or the discredit of the knowledge that we are producing in the field of African studies. So the oral nature of African societies in itself has posed some challenges to the advancement of African studies as an academic discipline. 
Also, there is the problem of access to research resources in terms of equipment, in terms of finance, and even in terms of researchers. Over the years, Africans have not been interested in the study of Africa, in the study of their own people. Our minds have been reconscientized to create the impression that you are a scholar when you study science. You are only a scholar when you read mathematics. You are only a scholar when you read accounting. So people were not interested in taking up scholarship in African studies. So we had little or less experienced researchers who could undertake constructive and well-managed academic uh, research to produce well-advanced knowledge on Africa. Because of this, the knowledge that people produced on Africa could be challenged. Research also involves finances. It involves getting the right tools. And one problem is that there is very limited, if not any, of these equipments and resources available to the few people who are interested in studying about Africa. But in recent years, you find more organizations interested in investing into the study of African studies. For instance, over the past 30 years, there have been collaborations between African scholars and then scholars from the West, scholars from the America, who have received scholarship from UNESCO to undertake research or to study Africa. You also have some organizations offering scholarship to students in graduate programs to undertake uh, research on Africa, on issues bordering Africa. Because of this, the knowledge on Africa, documentation of the history or the culture of Africa, and documentation on issues affecting the people of Africa is increasing in volumes and increasing considerably. Another problem is that the higher education institutions, like the universities, did not pay much attention to the establishment of African studies as a course on its own in the universities. So students were learning engineering, students were studying biology, students were studying all manner of courses and programs. But there was little about African studies. Universities were not drawing up well-planned curriculars. They were not organizing the program well. And at a point, it was even a non-scoring subject, which means that the grade that a student got was not calculated as part of your CGPA. Because of this, students were not even taking it seriously. After all, if I get a B, it doesn't matter. If I get a D, it doesn't matter. If I get an F, it doesn't matter. Because of this, the advancement of African studies as a course in our higher educational institutions was being retarded. Thankfully, institutions of higher learning are now paying much more attention to African studies. So in Ghana, when you go to the University of Ghana, uh, you go to the, the Institute of African Studies, you will find a lot of students who are now taking graduate programs, both at the master's and the PhD level, in African studies. You find people like myself who are now advancing careers to become lecturers and become scholars in African studies. Now when you go to the various campuses, African studies is a compulsory course which is also scorable. And that is what you are also doing now. So this has also contributed, even though initially it was a problem, now things are changing and there is the hope that as the years progress, African studies is going to 
become a much more and well appreciated academic discipline of study. This brings us to the end of today's lecture. Today we have looked at the scope and the nature of African studies. We have looked at what African studies is, the reason why African studies was established as a course. We have looked at the problems and the challenges facing African studies as an academic discipline. And we have also looked at the reasons or the purpose or the relevance of you as a student to study African studies. So next week, we are going to delve much deeper into the misconceptions of, about Africa. Once we look at the misconceptions about Africa, you also come to know some of the contributions of Africans to the development of the world. Thank you and take care.